good afternoon. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful weather here that we're experiencing. Hey, I want to shoot this quick video. It's going to be a blessing to you. And uh, we're continuing a study, in fact, that we've been doing all year here at Faith Life Center. And it's about growth. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, every fiber of my being believes it, that we are supposed to grow, improve, progress, advance. And we've been looking at the 15 laws of growth outlined by John Maxwell and his, his book. We've been going through each of the laws. We're up to the law of the ladder. And so recent ones, last week we looked at the law of pain that basically says, you know, uh, good management of bad experiences leads to great growth. I think before that we looked at the law of design that says to maximize growth, you need to develop strategies. Uh, see, we serve a God of vision, but we also serve a God who's got strategies and he will give us those strategies if we pause, reflect, ask and inquire he'll give us the 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 strategies just like the children of israel he said hey look there's a new land for you it's a promised land it's a glorious land it's it's plenteous it's prosperous land and uh in fact there's cities that you're gonna inhabit first one is jericho but this is exactly how you're gonna take it here's the strategy and so god is a god of vision he will instill vision and courage to go after that dream but he also give you the accompanying strategies to fulfill it you know i love joshua you know he he got a dream at 17 but then uh then the lord began dealing with his walk and then eventually his his dream inspired his walk and then his walk fulfilled his dream i think the one before that the law before that was the law of environment that basically says you know growth thrives in a conducive surrounding so we want to make sure you know we've got the right surroundings uh, so that our our vision, the seed of the vision, can grow. But hey, I could I could recap and recap. But we want to jump into this new law, the law of the ladder, which basically says character growth determines the height of personal growth. So you know, character is is who we really are, and it's going to determine how high we climb. And I really believe that we've got to get bigger on the inside than we are on the outside. And you've got to get better on the inside than you are on the outside. You know, we need competence um, and good character to do what he asks us to do. But if we forfeit either one, competence or character, you know, we're never going to accomplish um, all that God has set out for us to do. So, you know, you, you could have character but no competence and never be a success. You could have a whole bunch of com uh, competence but no character and never be a success. So, you know, we've got to be better on the inside, which is character, than we are on the outside, which is your reputation. And see, over time, you will become greater on the outside when you work on the inner man. But, you know, if you flip it, it's also true. If you're better on the inside, outside, if you're better on the outside, then what you are on the inside, over time, your outside will crumble. Let me say that again. If you're better on the outside than you are on the inside, over time, your outside will crumble. So the inside always influences the outside. In fact, let me share a quick uh, uh, passage. It's, it's found in Proverbs uh, 20, 23. And it basically says in verse 7, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. See, the vision you carry in your heart must be bigger on the inside than where you are now on the outside. So see, see, if your character isn't strengthening or being strengthened, then your future is weakening. And your leadership, I'm telling you, starts with you. So you're going to make a determined purpose. You're going to make a decision of quality to determine to, to, to work on your character, to grow your character, learn to lead yourself. You know, before we can lead other people, organizations, and nations, we've got to learn how to lead yourself. In fact, if we don't lead ourselves, it will sabotage your leadership. So, you know, we must rise uh, with our vision that is growing on the inside, but it begins on the inside. And I'm telling you something about vision. I'm probably going to end on talking a little bit about vision, but every step towards vision is a step where you will be pruned. And it's going to take a uh, good character, strong character to embrace the pruning process. You know, a part of you is going to have to die to reach <laughs> your vision. Your vision has a price.
that you've got to be willing to pay and if you've got good character you'll be willing to pay it and from my experience you know um, as you as you grow and you embrace the vision that God has given you the cost goes up at every level at each level and at each level you must you know put away childish things so that you can grow internally to rise to that next new level so this is what character does it trades pleasure for discipline um, it is uh, it is it, it, it is willing to forsake the temporary pressures for the eternal lasting growth that is going on on the inside that happens through discipline I'm telling you it is time for us all to grow we've got to grow big in fact churches ought to be focused we ought to be focused on growing big people and those big peoples will grow the big church the big vision the big dreams that we have so what areas I'm just gonna to touch on right now what areas are we supposed to grow it up in well let's grow physically we've got to grow physically you know be healthy and strong we've got to grow relationally um, I would say that was number you know not in a, in a order of priority or importance but hey grow physically grow relationally make sure you've got strong relationships because it's your strong relationships that will ha enhance you and your leadership and get that priority right concerning your relationships you know it starts with your family don't sacrifice your family for your vision it isn't worth it don't chase a vision at their expense your family should be part of your vision Thirdly, grow financially. You know, how you handle money is, is vitally important. It'll either help you or hinder your leadership, especially in ministry. You know, people uh, should trust your use of money and your stewardship. F f uh, money matters. It, it's so important. It matters to God. Grow mentally. You know, leaders are, are learners. And if you're a leader, you are, I would say, annoyingly curious. You know, uh, success leaves clues, and uh, and, and so uh, you, you've got to mine any success story and look to find the gold. And and you and I have got to be disciplined to do that. We've got to believe uh, that that it must be better. Uh, so you are constantly making yourself better by learning and growing. So maintain a teachable spirit. I would say another area of growth is grow with your time management. You maximize your life by maximizing your time. You know, how we do um, all the other things that I've mentioned, growing physically, financially, mentally, relationally, relationally um, all those things, how we grow in those areas, you got to schedule it. You got to plan for it. You got to have good time management. So that's an essential one. You got to grow in how you manage. One of the greatest resources, greatest treasures you have, and that is that is time. Hey, show me how you spend your time, and I will show you your future. And so, so let's get your big rocks in first, and uh, and grow. And then, of course. Most importantly, grow spiritually. Maintain a strong connection with the Spirit of God. Maintain a strong uh, spiritual diet. You know, I would say um, five points to growing up spiritually. Stay connected to your church. You know, remain planted. Uh, those that be planted. I think it's in, in Psalms uh, 90, 92 verse 13. It says those that be planted. They're going to. They're going to flourish. They're going to be strong. Come on, it's the righteous that are flourishing. And, and that's exactly who, who we are. But one way we do that is, is stay connected, stay planted to the church. In fact, Paul said this in, uh, to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, 16, he, he says, The whole body is fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Everyone has got a joint. Everyone is part of this body, and you have a supply, so submit your supply. And now he goes on and says, according to the working of the measure of each part, there's a, there's a, there's a part that you've got to play, and there's a measure that you've got, maketh increase, makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in, in love. So, so stay connected. Number two, make sure and ensure that the word is first place in your life. You know, Matthew 6 uh, 33 says, you know, seek first the kingdom, the kingdom of God. The kingdom simply means the realm in which the king's will is done and executed. So now that we're living in a new kingdom, or if you're living in, in a kingdom, 
you're living in a realm where the king's word is the final authority and his will is done above everyone else's. And so we're seeking his will first. Number three, this is how we grow up spiritually, you meditate the word word that you have given first place. You know, Joshua 1 verse eight, you know, don't let the word depart from your, your mouth, you know, meditate on these things day and night, observe them so you can do them. Uh, that's, a, that's a key for all of us. Um, do all that is written in the word of God, how precious this is. And then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you shall have good success. You know, David, he says something very similar in Psalm 1 verse 2. He says, delight in the word. You know, the word, let it be your delight. Um, <laughs> and in the law, in the word, meditate it day and night. The fourth point to growing up spiritually, do the word that you meditate in. You know, James 1.25 says, you know, um, the guy who locks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, there is something about continuing in the law of liberty and does not forget, don't forget what he hears, but he's a doer of it. Now that is the one who will be blessed in what he does. So be a doer of the word of God. Like Keith Moore always says, you know, I'm a doer. I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the word of God. And number five, follow the, the prompts. Promptly follow the prompts of the Holy Spirit. I love from the Amplified Romans chapter seven, verse six. It says, you know, so now we serve not under obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the promptings of the spirit in newness of life. You know, so, hey, um, be prompt to, the prompts of the Holy Spirit. That's another way we can grow up. Now, all of these things are gonna take character to do these things. You know, it's gonna take discipline, that's character, to manage your time, to, to grow up mentally, to be a learner, to grow financially, you know, to, to resist the temptation to buy that next new pair of shoes or whatever it may be. Growing up relationally, you know, you want your relationships to last, so you're gonna invest in them, you're gonna maintain those things. It's gonna take character, you know. Uh, to grow up physically, it's going to take character to go for that run that you don't want to go go on when you when you're feeling tired and you've had a hard day. It's going to take a lot of motivation and a lot of uh, discipline, good character to grow up spiritually. But but you can do that. You can stay connected to your local church. You know, give and submit your supply. That's going to take character. And when you do, it causes growth. It's going to take character to to give the word of God first place. You know, you're saying, look, um, I'm in a new kingdom. I'm living in the kingdom. Uh, in a realm where the king's word is the final authority his will is done above everyone else's and so I'm seeking that first it's going to take character to meditate the word and give that word that you're given first place um, time to saturate your heart through the process of meditation and be a doer of the word and then following promptly the prompts of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you just a couple of signs uh, if you're growing in your character. First one is humility. You know, if we see someone who has humility, we know they have character that is being strengthened. You know, humility is not necessarily, it's not denying your strength, it's just being honest about your weaknesses, saying, look, you know, I can't handle this on my own. I love, you know, in, in Peter where it says, you know, uh, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Right before that, he was dealing with humility. He said, okay, this is a picture of what humility actually looks like. You cast all your cares. In other words, you can't be your own t caretaker. You have a caretaker, now cast the care. So humility is not denying your strength. It's just being honest with your weaknesses. You know, uh, there's there's something about talent. It's it's not contagious, <laughs> but attitude and character is. You know, bad character and attitude in a team, an organization, a business. It's going to affect the rest of the team. You know, bad attitude is a disrupt disruptor, and uh, worse than that, it's actually contagious. Another sign uh, that we are growing up in our character would be. Um, how authentic are we? Authenticity, genuineness um, about our faith, genuineness about about people. Paul said concerning Timothy in Second Timothy chapter one verse five, he said, "I am reminded of your sincere faith." You know, as preachers, as teachers, you know, we must be, uh, we must teach um, out of our belief, not out of our knowledge. We must be sincere and genuine about about our teaching. All right. Last point I want to kind of talk on is is um, concerning uh, the law of the ladder, it's gonna take character. The bigger you are on the inside, the bigger you're gonna, and bigger heights, higher heights you're gonna reach. 
on the outside, but it begins within. And notice it's not the law of the lift, it's the law of the ladder. It's going to take a step by step. It's, it, it can be that, that way. That doesn't mean that, that the Spirit of God can quicken you through the process. Absolutely He can. But you know what? One of the biggest things is holding on to your dream and letting the dream grow big on the inside of you. Pray big, bold prayers and see God do big, bold things in your life. You know, you can, uh, I think I mentioned this, you, you can't lead anything else unless you lead, lead your own life first. And until you have, you know, a great big compelling vision on the inside, um, then, then I don't know if you're going to be motivated to press through all the obstacles that will be that you'll be presented with to see a fulfillment of that. You know, um, it's it 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 has it, it, got to grow big on you, and in you, the vision has got to be compelling. It's got to be um, it's got to be bigger and better than what 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 your present looks like um it's something that you feel like hey i must see this there must be a conviction that says i must see this come to pass it is only uh that type of leader that'll ever work up the courage to change the prison where he sees and believes that the future is more important than the present and will be willing to press through the difficulties of life and keep on rowing when the wind is blowing against you to get to the other side. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. It's not just seeing what could be, it's believing that it must be. I'm telling you, as leaders who are growing up and stepping up new levels, um, as a leader, your future has got to be more important than your present. And if it isn't, You'll never change the present to get to your future. If you'll not change, I'm telling you, if I don't change, I'm not fit for leadership. In fact, change is the price tag of leadership. And in, in, a, in, in this season, I believe, uh, in fact, I know the next level demands a new price. And I just encourage you, work up the courage to pay the price. Jesus' leadership cost them. It's going to cost you too. And when we get too comfortable, when we get comfort, comfortable, ah, do you know what? I actually think that that's where our leadership is beginning to come to an end. See, the goal, pressing towards the goal, is not uh, always going to be comfortable. But here's the deal. The goal is not comfort. The goal is growth. We're always pushing, looking to see what it is about you, your strategy, and your team, where we can grow and get to our goal. That's what we're always pushing towards. See, your vision, wake up tomorrow morning and let the vision on the inside grow bigger on the inside, and then your life will grow bigger on the outside. Let the vision ignite your soul. The vision should be like fire within your bones. If, it, if, it's, if you're not changing, um, to, to line up your life to the cause of Christ, uh, then you've lost sight of your vision, which is wrapped up in the cause of Christ, which means maybe God has to raise up a new leader to take that place and lead whatever that endeavor is that has to happen, that must be fulfilled. Hey, listen, as a leader, you've got to pursue the future, and it's going to be at the expense of the present because the future is more important. i tell you what, the best days are ahead. We're growing up in these things. This is the law of the ladder. Hey, the law of the ladder that basically says character growth determines the height of our personal growth. Until next law, let's keep on working them.